Okay, so before we end it, I want to show you guys something super cool that I just received. I've been after these shoes for a while, ever since I've seen the original pictures of them leak online. And I've been really in love with the its silhouette, the design of it, everything about it. Especially nowadays, considering that we live in a retro sneaker market. Everything is retros. There are really no new silhouettes or fresh shapes anymore. Ever since Ye went on that anti-Semite world tour where he unfortunately um, damaged irreversibly his relationship with Adidas, which then led to the end of the Yeezy line. We don't really have any new fresh silhouettes anymore. All we have are retros. Even if it's ASICs and stuff, it's just retro runners with maybe different type with kind of hybrids, different uppers, different sole units. But it's just retros that are dominating the market the moment so whenever i see somebody making a new shoe a new design a new shape i'm all for it even if it's something that's not really to my taste i'm gonna get behind because i think these sneaker designs out here should be encouraged to try and risk taking some chances with some new shapes new silhouettes new applications new processes and see if that works as opposed to just taking the conventional air force one dunk jordan shape and silhouette and then just kind of reimagining the inners i don't want that I want new shapes, new silhouettes. I want stuff to be pushed and be challenged. And maybe, in a weird way, some of these smaller, independent sneaker footwear brands and companies are going to be the ones that are going to force some of the big players to innovate and to give us new and more interesting things. Because at the moment, sneakerheads aren't going to force them to do that because us sneakerheads, myself included, we're all sheep. We keep buying the stuff. We don't really vote with our wallets. We don't boycott brands. We just keep mindlessly buying retro after retro after retro. So, all that to be said, I recently got a pair of John Geiger's GF4s, right? John, Ge John Geiger's... John so, saying all that, I recently got a pair of John Geiger's 004 sneakers delivered to me just the other day. So, shout out to John Geiger. In the US 11, the 004s in the black colorway, which I'm really happy about. I didn't mind either colorway. I would have been okay to get the melons, to be completely honest. And I probably will find a way to get the melons myself later on down the line. But I am super stoked that I also got the black pair because I can immediately wear them with all the stuff that I've got anyway. So it comes to this big, nice box, as you can see there already. You've got this box that's kind of like in this faux snakeskin um, almost kind of material on the top there. It's almost like a patent type of thing, but it's got the snakeskin embossing there. And you see the John Geiger logo over there as well, which I really like. The John Geiger logo kind of reminds me of like the old, is it Sony Discman logo type of thing? right, with a little sign on top of it, so I'm, I'm a big fan of that, maybe over time, if he becomes more confident with his brand, he could just remove the Geiger, and have the, the symbol itself be him, right, that could just be, that logo could be the symbol, without the Geiger written on there, really chic and clean, I don't mind that, then when you open the box, you've got a really nice dust bag here too, that you can use, which is also features my favourite colour, neon green, brat summer all year, but I've always been a fan of neon green, it's one of my safety, my, my favourite colours of all time, safety green, neon green, fluorescent green, whatever, I'm a big fan of it, so you've got this nice dust bag here, and this cream colour, with the John Geiger logo written on there, and then the shoes come individually wrapped, in nice bits of tissue paper, and then you've got the shoes here, as I'm going to show you, and they're delightful, and actually, I'm not going to lie, they're a lot lighter than I originally thought. I thought these would be way heavier. They're a lot lighter than what they actually look. They look quite heavy, if you see them here, but they actually feel really, really light. I love this sole unit. It reminds me of the NMDs, this kind of bubbled um, midsole here, right? It's really soft as well. I love the outsole, the tread. I love how it runs along the back of the heel all the way up to the front. If I was being picky, if I was being picky, I would have probably liked the whole tread. You know how the tread on the outsole, it's almost like a tire, tire tread, right? Which is really good. It looks like a bicycle tread, maybe like a car tread. It runs along the back of the heel. I would have preferred it when it comes at the front that you run the whole entire tread on this tip here. But instead on the tip, he's got this really nice, I think it's like a nubuck material. I think it's nubuck. I think it might be nubuck here on the front. And then on the top, you just got this mixture of mesh with this, I'm, I'm guessing it's like rubber or plastic on the, up, on the up, which is like this net. And I love it because weirdly enough, the design, I think I mentioned it before, it's a really clever way to add like panels to the upper without adding panels. I think we saw it a lot, obviously, with the Yeezy 350s um, that um, Kanye made. It was a bit of a game changer because you got to have like a shoe that had a shape 
and that didn't have a panel. It was almost like the shape came from like the sole and from the upper design. It kind of gave it a shape. You didn't need to have, because even the NMDs, the original Adidas NMDs, if you remember the original Adidas NMDs, they had the three stripes that kind of gave it a little bit of solidity and the shape. But the original 350s, or the original like Zoom, yeah, I think 300 350s, right? They were just like a sock liner but he was able to get the shape on them. I don't know how. Maybe there's some sort of trick design-wise I'm not understanding, but I think John Geiger's done the same thing. By having this like net design on the top, you almost give this shoe panels. You give it like a toe box shape. You give it like side panels. You give it all panels with this just, with this like plastic cage on the outside, which is super, super cool. Maybe in the future, there might be an option to have this cage be a little bit more detached so that it kind of, you can kind of tighten the shoe using the cage, that makes sense. So it almost works like flywire. That would be pretty cool. Like imagine if the cage at the top around the eyelets was a little bit loose and came away from the top. So there'd be a way to when you like pull the laces, it kind of tightens and adds tension to the shoe. But regardless, lifestyle wise, I'm a big fan of it. It's got this really nice plush inside. Smells really good on the inside there. I'm not going to lie. It doesn't smell like Chinese factories. Um, nice plush inside there. You've got the nice hit of the orange on the heel tab. You've also got the hit there on the logo at the front. Um, I actually like the mixture there of the logo. Um, different colours there. You've got the orange with that kind of like mini disc logo there. And the green with Geiger. You've got a nice little, uh, what you call it, eyelet thing that you can run the laces through in the middle. I'm probably going to relace them. I don't like to run my laces through these things. But in this particular one, it's kind of raised. As you can see there from the side, those little eyelets and tongue are raised. Usually on some sneakers, they're usually flat. But I guess you're meant to wear them like that. So it kind of gives it shape and gives that little extra pop on the color in the middle. And then um, you've got another pull type here on the back. I also like the detail here of the green. This kind of like Tiffany blue, greeny type of colorway on the back here. Looks really cool. And then you've got a white on the inside. And then the other detail that I really like, it kind of reminds me of the hit that Virgil did on the Jordans. Virgil on the Jordans, if I'm not mistaken, on the Jordan 1s for the 10 collection, there's like a little orange pull tab. And there's also this stitch, this little over stitch that kind of, you, you know, it's a little design touch. It kind of adds a little bit of a pop. Um, I'm sure there's some, there's a rhyme or reason behind it, but I think this touch is really nice. You got it three times along the side. And if you notice too along the side, there's also a J and a G there written on the side there. I'm not too sure if the number four is there also, but you do see a J. So over there, you do see a J there and you do see a G written here as well. So I like that he's incorporated his logo on the side there without doing it in a very over brash way. It's done kind of pretty cool. And you've also got the O text there on the inside. That's pretty cool there, the little addition there, maybe of the Otex technology. And then on the outsole, you've got the whole JG logo, which again, I would prefer, I'm not gonna lie, the John Geiger logo. I'd actually prefer if he transitioned into this kind of, like I said, that kind of weird mini disc-esque uh, logo that's on there. I kind of would like that to be the logo going forward, that, that to be his swoosh, that would be pretty sick. And then to have that maybe on the outsole instead of the JG, but still really like it. Nice bit of of flex in it as well, but the sole unit and the shot and the feel is super light, a lot lighter than I thought it would be. So I can't wait to wear these. I've got a US 10, I'm typically a US 10 and a half. No, I'm, I'm typically, no, I got a US 11. I'm typically a US 11.5 or a US 12, but sometimes if I get a US 12, the heel slips. And with this particular shoe, with this shape, I would much rather remove the insole and wear them insole-less and have my feet maybe pinch a bit at the front, but then be fit, then have to wear them and my sole flip because I would like to wear these with jeans and make them look cute and shit. So I'm happy with the 10s. They are a bit snug, but I can wear them. I don't give a fuck. I've been used to wearing um, shoes that are maybe just my size or under for a long time, so it's not going to be a worry. But they're really flipping nice. Um, if you want a pair, unfortunately, they are sold out. They are completely sold out now and they're going for crazy prices on flipping StockX. But as you can see on the website, there's actually two colorways on the particular shoe. I've got the Stealth colorway and the Melon colorway is actually really nice. I didn't like it at first, but now that John Guy, again, he's been a really good promoter of these shoes. He's been posting them nonstop on his Instagram with all these fucking fancy jeans and fancy shorts and lifestyle pictures, driving his fancy cars in bloody LA and shit, having a good time. And he's made these melon ones look really fucking good. Especially, I can imagine these with like some light denim and stuff, like a light denim suit. Like, whoa, these will look fucking good 
or maybe just a bright outfit. Do you know what I mean? In general, really good combination of greens and a red and orange. So I'll find a way to get these myself probably, but this is a really good pair. And they've also got them in black. Um, there's also another pair I saw. I think there's a multi pair, a pair where it's the same color, but I think on the toe box area, it's yellow. Um, and there's also another pair that's also yellow-ish, if I'm not mistaken. So they may be coming out soon if you do want a pair. But unfortunately, they're sold out at the moment. But keep an eye out on JohnGeiger.co. Um, sorry, JohnGeigerCo.com. Or follow him on social media, John Geiger, spelled J-O-N-G-E-I-G-E-R, for all your needs and purposes. I'm really happy that these have gone well. Because, like I said before, but yeah, I wasn't the biggest fan of the John Geiger GF-01s which are his kind of flip of an Air Force One. Obviously, the silhouette is a bit more slim. Um, maybe he would say the interiors are a bit more improved and he has maybe nicer colorways. But I think already the silhouette is done. It's certified as a Nike shoe. I'm not interested in it in the slightest. But I did see a lot more potential in John Geiger vis-a-vis -vis the, the shoe surgeon. Because with John Geiger, I saw some level of creativity and inventiveness and just like thinking outside the box when he made those incredible, I think, incredible customs. Probably one of the only custom shoes that I've ever been a fan of which were the misplay checks that's when i had my faith in him was restored i was like okay cool this guy knows what he's doing and now that he's been able to make these i'm glad my faith was always put in him because i knew there's the guy that can design a custom shoe like this are so simple but yet so effective and looks so chic and looks so cool where you just take a regular air force one and you just apply additional swooshes on top of the original swoosh in different luxury premium materials and it looks the way that it does especially in the high with the custom strap and stuff i thought that was brilliant way more interesting than the shoe surgeon rebuilding a jordan one in like lizard fucking material i don't give a fuck about that but i thought this showed that he had a level of creativity and inventiveness that would probably lead to a shoe that looks like this so i wasn't surprised when he did eventually come out with a shoe that i was a big fan of and i was really i um, hopeful that sneakerheads like myself would go out of their way to buy them and sell them out so that it would encourage him to make more of these because he runs a business if he's seeing that people are only buying the gf1s and selling those out i understand why he just keeps copying and pasting the silhouette and doing different colorways why the fuck not cash out you got family to look after it is what it is but now as an artist and as a designer if you're seeing people are ready for new shapes new silhouettes new ideas they, they want you to maybe push them and challenge them you're going to start making different durations of this and this shoe personally i feel like could work amazingly well as a high could work amazingly well as a boot as like a you know he could easily change this into like a hiking boot into a mid or something this easily could work as a sort of chucker shape as a high shape easily but this would only happen if you're getting a good response from these selling out if these sat around and they weren't selling out you probably would have scrapped it and gone back to just you know maybe making uh air max one copy or another air force one copy or whatever it may be but now these have been made i hope this gives them the encouragement needed to double down and start double to, to, to go a bit further and challenge yourself and make more silhouettes and put those out there because this gives you a reason to not buy a nike or to not buy an adidas because it's a different silhouette maybe some of you will see it and think it looks like a speridon maybe maybe but i think there are so many elements in this and it's so well done that i don't think it looks like any particular shoe particularly out there so you can buy these and wear these and look completely different to everybody out there on the streets who's wearing the same old fucking retros so i do encourage you to check out john geiger he's doing some fresh interesting things these are some really cool shoes i can't wait to wear them unlike other things that i don't wear straight away i am going to be wearing these straight away so i can't wait to put these on and be stunting on the man them outside and shit you know what the deal is you know what the deal is